So last week we took our first look at Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg, a free plugin with a pile of really cool blocks for Gutenberg by those great creators over at Brainstorm Force, the creators behind Astra and lots of Ultimate Add-ons. This time we're going to take a look at the latest update and the new feature that ships with it. So let's just jump over into WordPress and take a look at what the update offers. My name is Paul C and this is WP Touch, the channel where I help you create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that bell icon below to become part of the WP crew and be notified every time new content is added to the channel. Okay, so Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg, the new version which is 1.5, has one key new feature alongside a pile of fixes and updates. The new feature is the post carousel. We can now create great looking post carousels directly inside Gutenberg. So let's just jump over to the dashboard. We're going to create a new page and I'm going to show you how this works. So let's just click on Add New. That'll take us over and you can see we now have the Gutenberg editor. Now, if you're not familiar with Gutenberg, the whole concept behind it is everything is made up of blocks. So if we come to this top left hand side, you can see we've got a plus, gives us the option to add a block. And providing you have this plugin added in there, you'll see you scroll down and you've got UAGB blocks. Click and open that up and you can see we have a range of new blocks in there. And you can see if we scroll through, we have things like post timeline, social share and so on. Now I've covered these in a previous video. The link is in the description below. So if you'd like to see a bit more detail what these blocks offer, I'd recommend checking that out. Okay, so what we're looking for today is the new post carousel. If we click on that, you can see that loads in the carousel option. Now I'm using the Astra theme so you can see everything lays out the way you'd expect it to. If we take a look on the right hand side, you can see all the tools we have available for this actual block itself. When we've got a block active, you can see we have a series of icons above the block that allows us to do a couple of things. First option we have is to align center, which is what we currently have selected. Next up, we have wide width, which will then go to the full width of the theme that you're using. So this will give you a wider display. So you can choose whichever works for the design that you're working with. Now, if we come to the right hand side, we have all the options that allow us to customize the way that this new carousel actually works. So you can see under the general section, we've got newest to oldest, oldest to newest, A to Z and Z to A. So we can filter those out to make sure that they are listed in the way that we want them to be. We can also come down and choose what category is going to be displayed. And at the moment, we can either choose any of the categories go in there or we can choose all. However, what would be nice to see in a future iteration of this is the ability to select multiple categories. So we might not want all of them, but we might want something like the tutorials and uncategorized. We could choose just those then and eliminate any ones we don't want in there. I'd love to see that added into the next version. Then we've got the number of columns and you can see, or number of items I should say, sorry, and you can see we can limit this to any kind of number that we want. So we'll leave that as six. Next up, we have the number of columns and you can see if I adjust this, it will update in real time to show the changes that we make. So we can take that up or down. So four is the maximum we currently have available by using the slider, but we can't actually use the up and down arrows either. So we are limited to just using four in there. Then we've got the columns on the tablet, columns on the mobile. So this allows us to fine tune and tweak how many columns we have depending upon the device that this is being viewed upon. Once we've done that, we can come down to the carousel option. You can see we can now control the way the carousel works and how we can interact with it. So we can pause on hover. So if we take our mouse over this, instead of it transitioning to the next slides, it'll pause and allow us to see what's on there. So that's always a good way of doing it because it allows the user to pause this without the need to constantly try to catch up with the item they might be interested in viewing. Autoplay will mean that this will automatically transition over and over again. You can disable that if you want to, to allow it to be something that is a manual transition. You can also adjust the autoplay speed in milliseconds. Set that to be an infinite loop so it'll continually go around as opposed to getting the end of your carousel and then jumping back to the first one just to give you a nice smooth infinite loop. And again, you can adjust the transition speed on there. Next up, you've got the option to show arrows and dots. You can show either or or both together so we can go through and choose what we want. Now, at the moment, we're not seeing anything because we have three items or three posts and we're showing all three. So if I come back up and we adjust this to be something like two. You can see that immediately brings in the little dots underneath to denote we've got more items in the slider 
and also the ability to then control the arrows and the pause on hover and so on. So you can fine tune and tweak that to show exactly what you want. So we say we only want your dots, you can see the arrows now disappear, or we can say only arrows and the dots disappear, or we can have both on there. We can adjust the arrow size, the border size, and the arrow border radius, so we can fine tune and tweak those to make sure they look the way we want them to. Once you've done that, we can jump down to the image, and you can see we can control the show the featured image, and then we can control the actual size that's going to be used inside the actual featured image display in our carousel. So, depending upon the theme that you're using, you might have more or less options in here, but a default kind of copy of WordPress will give you thumbnails, medium, medium, large, and large. So if you find that your images look a little bit ropey, you can choose a higher resolution than you might currently be using, which could be something like thumbnails. We've also then got the image position. You can see we've got top or background, so we can easily set this to get a nice visual appeal. And we can then control the things like the background colors and so on, and the overlay opacity. So we can fine tune and tweak to get exactly what we want in there. Put that back to top. Kind of the content, you can see now we can control what's displayed. So we might not want to have the author, the date that it was posted, and all the things like the comments. You can easily come in, disable what you don't want, and leave things like the show excerpt. The excerpt length can be adjusted so we can have more or less on there, depending on what we want to do. So we can fine tune that to get exactly what we want. Next up, we've got the read more link. And as you can see, it says to show it, or we can hide it, and that'll disable the button. If we choose to show it, we can then choose to open links in a new tab or leave it as is, which will open a link inside the tab that you're actually viewing it on. We can adjust the button text font size. We can adjust the borders, the button border, the button border radius, the colors that are going to be used for both the normal and the hover effect. So we've got a ton of options in there. I don't need to go into those. I'm pretty sure you can kind of see where we're going with that. Next up, we have some basic typography controls. We can adjust the title tag that's going to be used and choose from any of the heading titles, one through six. We can adjust the font size and the font uh, excerpt, font size for the title and the excerpt. We're still not in that position yet where they actually have much in the way of typography control inside either Gutenberg or inside the actual add-on itself. Now, this is something they're spoken to developers about, and they're waiting to see what Gutenberg do to deal with typography. If they find that it's not going to work out the way they hope it will, they're going to look at implementing their own typography options. So one way or another, we should have more control of the typography when we're using the ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg. So once we've done that, we can come down and you can see we've got things like colors. So we can adjust any of the color information, the blog background color. You can see we can adjust anything on there or we can choose our own color, whatever we want to do on there. Same for the title, the meta and so on and so forth. And then finally, we have the spacing, which allows us then to control the row gap, the gap between the posts and the dots, content padding and so on. Again, all self-explanatory. Just edit them, test them out, see what you think, get it to look the way you want, and you're going to be golden. Finally, we have the advanced option, which allows us to assign a custom CSS class, which we could then use our own custom CSS to target this particular element and make changes to the style that fall outside of what we can do inside the actual editor itself. So we've seen what this looks like inside Gutenberg itself, but what does it look like on the page? Let's click on Preview, and that'll open up the WordPress Preview, and you can see that we've got a very simple layout. We've got the option then to scroll through. We've got the little dots underneath we can use for navigation, and we can click on any of these to go through and view the full article. So you can see it's all the way you'd expect it to work. And that pretty much sums up the new addition to the Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg. A couple of things I'd like to see added into this in future iterations. First of all, like I say, the typography options. I think we need that either inside Gutenberg itself or inside the Ultimate Add-ons for, uh, for Gutenberg. Whatever tool we use on there, we need to have control of the typography to make sure everything looks the way we want it to. Something else I'd also like to see is the option to make sure that we have these boxes to be equal height. Because at the moment, if you have longer titles, bigger or smaller images, it looks a little disjointed. So fingers crossed, this will be something they add into the next update just to make it look a little bit more uniform. So I think the latest update in this post carousel is a nice addition to what's already shaping up to be a great free plugin for Gutenberg. And what do you think of this? Do you think this is something you could see yourself using? Have you started working with Gutenberg itself? If you have, what do you think of it? Do you think it's starting to mature and starting to get some nice controls in there? Do you find there's some good sort of third party developers are starting to sort of plug into this and creating a more flexible infrastructure for you to start working with? Or do you still think it's an absolute horrible, 
clunky piece of junk. Let me know in the comments section below. And while you're in there, let me know what you thought of the video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down, but let me know why you didn't enjoy it. Okay, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.